after my mother died in 95, I came back and people had given me a bit of money to spend in the name of my mother and I said, what better but a kitchen? Because she was always a great one for food. And so I started this food program, which was basically a humanitarian gesture for students who were walking hours to school and walking home and were there without any food at all. It was given that focus by the fact that I was doing it in memory of my mother. If a student gets a good meal and she gets a good health, she can also study well. Getting women educated in Africa is a real challenge. In our school in Tanzania, we made a concerted drive because most of these students there are from Maasai-based tribes and uh, they don't educate the girls. The girl is a valuable property. She can be sold off for cows as a dowry. So education is not always valued by some of the Maasai. So to push education for girls, we established hostels to encourage the girls to come in, live Monday to Friday, go back to the village. So I began with hostels. And the first hostel started with 13 Maasai girls who had been walking daily to school, about two and a quarter hours, two and a half hours each day to school. And they came in on Monday and walked home Friday. So it was responding to the need then of this local community to help these girls particularly. So it became so successful, I opened up hostels for boys. Many people here come from far away, so to be in the hostel, it's helped us a lot. When we went to Form 5 and 6, that's A-level education, I knew boarding was the only way to go because the numbers of students that are qualifying for that education are very few, and so your catchment area needs to be quite wide, and boarding was absolutely necessary winning the support of the local Maasai chief to allow his children to go to school and stay in the hostels was critical, as education for girls is a low priority for many families. Well, the Maasai chief was simple, and the Maasai people, if you want to provide a free service, they will come along. Admittedly, convincing them to bring their daughters was another issue, but again, one step enough, and we certainly were able to encourage more of their boys to come. Indeed, the local chief has nine wives himself and 70 children. So not only is he influential in the eyes of his community, his example is a powerful one. Clearly, the chief has been won over, as some of his children, both sons and daughters, now attend the school. Of course, the students themselves can appreciate the opportunity they're being given. In fact, the chief's eldest son, a former student at the school, acted as interpreter. They are benefiting a lot by sending their children there and getting a lot of help from Christian brothers. And education is going to change all these young marriages where Maasai girls are assigned to elders as second and third and fourth wives. The girls are now thinking about it differently and the people around Arusha are thinking about it differently too. The more educated people are, the more they're likely to be able to get a job and help themselves, and particularly girls. Girls' education is very important. I read somewhere once that a girl who even just went to Standard 7, that's the end of primary school, her chances of having infant mortality was reduced by something like 90%, just so she could recognise when kids were sick and all that was about trying to empower girls and give them something beyond carting buckets of water around and being beaten up by their husbands for the rest of their lives. 